What's shaking? My name's Cam. Welcome back to another video. You are going to see a rather interesting experiment in this video. And I don't mean me. I don't, I'm, I'm not the experiment. The experiment of how big of a forehead can you possibly fit onto a, <laughs> onto a human man? No, no. This one is a writing experiment. On my last weekly writing live stream, by the way, if you have Twitch, you should follow me there so you can join in on the next one of these. I decided to do something a bit different. Normally we would chat for a bit, set a timer for everyone to get some writing done, chat for a bit more, set another timer and do that for a couple of hours. But on this particular day, rather than just doing the regular old writing sprints, I thought I would give myself a goal, a challenge. Uh, you know what? Why don't I just let my handsome ugly friend explain it for me? So the writing challenge for the stream that I'll be doing today, you don't have to do it, but I will be writing a short story, like a flash fiction, really short story for Wattpad um, because I haven't done a Wattpad video in a long time and I want to do another one. So I'll be writing a Wattpad story. And the reason I need your help is because I'm going to be getting prompts and story things from you. And then I'm going to have to try and mash them all together and make a story. I did something similar to this the last time I wrote a story for Wattpad, although it wasn't live. So let's say for a flash fiction, I'll have two characters, okay? So I need you to throw some names at me. Doesn't matter, boy, girl, whatever. Just throw some names at me and I'll pick out two randomly. Trina, Jimmy, Jimmy Mungbean. Jiminy Mungbean? Okay, I'm throwing that one in there. That's one winner already. Jiminy Mungbean. I'm sorry, I love that. I would love to choose a funny one like Goku or Gandalf, but I don't want it to be like a completely comedic story. So I'll go with Clive. So the next thing I need is, this is the fun one. I need the genre. Okay, so it looks like fantasy is a winner either way because there's a lot of fan fantasy subgenres, but I will pick a subgenre as well. A lot of people are leaning either towards like a dystopian or like a horror kind of thing. So we'll do a fantasy. All right, let's do like a fantasy dystopian kind of thing. That seems to be... Uh, so here's what we've got so far. We've got two characters, Jiminy Mungbean and Clive. Uh, it's a dystopian fantasy flash fiction. The next thing I need is a, a location for the story to take place. I realized what this is actually. This is like, <laughs> this is like improv. Like, you know, like when you go to like one of those really cringy clubs and there's like people doing improv comedy. It's like that, but with writing. I'm I'm getting pulled towards the dentist office on this one. I'm 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 gonna have to go a dentist office from Cinephilia here. I think I, I'm already getting some getting some good ideas. One last thing I need before we start actually writing. One just one last thing. Um, well, technically three, but we'll do them in one. I just need just a random like word for me to throw into the story or to like direct the story. For example, that's really vague. I know. Um, just give me a random word like. Uh, axe or something like that just throw random words at me and i'm going to pick three of them out and i'll find a way to work them into the story and then that's it i'm going to start planning cheese curds okay, God, curds is such a gross word discombobul oh, okay that's one of the words one of the three i'm throwing in discombob there's a funny meme of a cat doing that there's like a cat fighting with a dog and it's doing like the sherlock holmes slow motion thing it's like counter with cross to left cheek I think I will throw sacrifice in there because, like I said, I don't want it to be an entirely goofy story. I am going to try and make it at least a little bit serious. And Bethany. Actually, we got multiple people asking for Velcro. Okay, Velcro. There we go. I am, like, the hardest part of that whole thing was trying to figure out how to work the word Velcro into a, <laughs> into a fantasy short story. But I think I got it. It's going to be a stupid story, but at the very least, it'll be interesting. Go to Google right now and look up Furless Bear. That is disgusting. <laughs> I'm not putting it in my story, Lady Uko. I'm drawing the pixies just because I've never written them before in like a horror setting. So I think I think I want to give that a try. I do like that. So that was the goal. Write a flash fiction for Wattpad with the story prompts that you gave me. You gave me names, a location, genre, and also some random words to throw in there. Can I point out that trying to add the word Velcro to a fantasy story is weirdly difficult? <laughs> well, I did it. It ended up being longer than I expected, but ultimately, <laughs> I think it's okay. Not my best or my most creative story, obviously, but not bad for something that I quite literally wrote 
on the spot. Now the full thing will be up on my Wattpad, I'll leave a link in the description, but here's what I'll do. I'll read some of it for you now, like a dramatic reading. Again, please remember this isn't like a super serious short story. It quite literally went from very messy conception to finished product in like two hours. Uh, anyway, here is some of it. Flames formed towers of spiraling amber. They spilled from windows and doors, swallowing everything in their devastating heat. Jiminy spun on the spot, his legs weak, his mind racing. What in the name of the old gods had happened? Every building was in flames or turned to rubble. Thatcher's herbalist store was cut through the middle. The village school was little more than dust. A screech broke through the roar of the inferno and Jiminy fell back into his raft. He had seen the destruction long before he reached shore, but he had not heard the screams. He moved to hide himself beneath the fishing net, but another yell froze him solid. Father. Before Jiminy could stop himself, his feet were on the sand and he was moving into the blaze. Father! There was no reply. He shielded his face, blinking against the sting of smoke and sweat. Another scream pierced the night. This one was not human. Gods help me. Blinding heat and smoke enveloped the young man in darkness. Jiminy's breaths became more laboured and the flames that licked his neck had become white hot blades. He collapsed to the side, unable to break his fall before he hit the dirt. Blood pulsed like a battle drum in his head and his tongue felt thick with dust. Father, Jiminy croaked as all faded to black. Jiminy woke to the feeling of cool water against his lips. His eyes still stung as they flickered open and his throat felt scorched, but he was alive. Clive? Kneeling above Jiminy was an elderly man. His eyes gleamed in the dark from above a thick black moustache. Lad, you shouldn't have come back. Jiminy sat up, his arms burning in protest. What happened Clive? Where is everyone? Clive looked down, the creases in his face painting a portrait of despair. They're gone, lad. No. No, I heard my father. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. I heard him clear as day. Jiminy snapped. His face had become hot, and he staggered to his knees, throwing his arms out for the doorframe. No. Clive helped Jiminy to his feet, but then guided him to the raised, dentist's bed in the middle of the room. You heard the pixie. Jiminy was still staring at the closed door and the glow of flame through the gaps. Pixie. Dreadful creature. Can mimic voices to draw out its prey. You really shouldn't have come back. Jiminy put his head in his palms. I remember, he began. In school, they told us of pixies. They would be summoned through dark magic to grant wishes. He looked up at Clive, his eyes more red and wet than they had already been from the smoke. Who would do such a thing? Here. Clive stepped back and turned, his feet clumsily kicking a wooden tray on the floor. It was dark, but Jiminy could see the old dentist was struggling to say something. You really have been gone a long time, lad. I was always going to come back. Once I found the witch doctor. Did you find him? Clive said without turning. Hot tears burned a track through the soot on his cheeks. Not that it matters now. You said everyone's gone. My father? Clive turned around again, looking much older than Jiminy remembered him. I'm sorry. Damn it. Jiminy dug his nails into his knees. Damn it! My wife passed, Clive said, shuffling to another side of the small room, before this pixie. I suppose a year or so now. Jiminy frowned. There was something in the old man's tone that made the hair on his neck stand erect. I had to try something. You surely understand. Someone summoned the pixie, Jiminy mumbled quietly. His eyes flicked from Clive to the surface where his operating tools lay. Scattered across the bench, visible in the orange glow from the far window was a row of glass jars. Each of them held teeth, some small, some large, some too sharp to be human. Jiminy's stare shifted to the wall behind the jars, to a strange symbol painted in red, so dark it was almost black. You, he gasped. That's about the first half of the Flash Fiction. You can read the rest on my Wattpad, I'll link that below along with the link to my Twitch channel. And if you're a fellow writer, I would love it if you stuck around. I do lots of fun videos here on the topic of writing, so hopefully that's something you would enjoy. Thanks so much for watching, especially for watching through the whole video. I really appreciate it. Thank you. See you in the next one. Catch ya.